Hi, this is Chicho. Now what we're gonna do in these set of videos is talk about trigonometry. And if you're interested in just um, doing simple uh, trigonometric calculations and knowing what the basics of geometry is, and in 2007, I put a bunch of videos together um, for the language of mathematics in series one that explore um, some of the basic concepts of trigonometry and um, geometry and triangles and uh, similar and congruent triangles and whatnot, right? Some of the basic concepts of trig ratios. But those videos sort of came at you um, sort of out of the blue. There wasn't any prep work in uh, the introduction of why it is that we do study triangles. Okay, and that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna pick up the topic of trigonometry and we're going to start from the beginning and take it all the way up to uh, basically talking about trig ratios, uh, trig functions, graphing trig functions, and uh, talking about trig identities a little bit, okay? Now, as for why we study triangles, um, the, the mathematics of triangles basically came about I think it was, um, God, third century or something like this. Uh, it came about, as, as we talked about before in the first, uh, first set of videos, uh, basically us exploring the world around us, right? Uh, astronomy had a huge part to play in this, but trigonometry uh, is basically the concept of studying uh, polynomials that have three angles, three sides, right? Or shapes that have three sides. and. Uh, triangles come into play in our everyday lives in a lot of different places, right? Uh, uh, architectural work, it comes into play in surveys. Um, it comes into play in uh, tripods, basically uh, three, um, uh, a tripod is the most stable uh, sort of a structure that we can create when it comes to having one focal point, right? That's why most cameras, most, uh, most video equipment, they're, they're sitting on tripods or drum cymbals, right? Uh, drum equipment. Uh, so uh, triangles come to play in our lives in, in a lot of different places. Uh, one of the places that I've used triangles, right angles, triangles specifically, is uh, to do some survey work where, you know, I'd be going out doing geophysics and I would have to lay out a grid. And what I would do is use uh, special right angles, triangles um, specifically, where, you know, the, the multiples are easy to calculate, right? Three, four, and five, and multiples of that, right? So, you know, we'd lay out a triangle or I would do it solo with, uh, you know, two or three different tapes and uh, stakes into the ground. and. But basically, with line of sight, I would set up a grid which was extremely accurate. So that's one area that triangles come into play, which is just everyday type of thing and sort of different types of calculations, okay? Uh, but one of the main important areas where triangles come into play, which is never really introduced in beginning level introduction to trigonometry when we start talking about triangles is because triangles are related to circles, which is a weird concept to comprehend, right? And the reason why we study circles is because circles are the perfect cyclic function. And cyclic functions for us are, are huge, right? Uh, Maybe from the life cycle, maybe from the earth rotating around its axis, the earth rotating around the sun, the sun going around the galaxy, maybe the ties, maybe the uh, female menstrual cycle, maybe the cycle of work, maybe it may be married of other things. So many things are dependent on a cyclic function. And that is, for me anyway, the main reason that we study triangles, because triangles give us an understanding of how cyclic functions work and cyclic functions aside from everyday type of life they're actually embedded within within nature within light within sound within vibrations right all of that stuff is basically trigonometry and trig functions where we're graphing waves that's why we really study triangles and right angles triangles specifically 
So what we're going to do right now is um, I have some uh, grid paper here and some blank paper on this side. So what we're going to do is draw a circle on this grid paper and we're going to see how triangles are related to circles and why they allow us to analyze cyclic functions and help us to move around the cyclic function. Okay. Um, as far as uh, drawing things go, I have a few different colors uh, of pens and stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to go with a brighter color for our triangle, sort of go lighter with the grid, our X and Y coordinate, because it's not enough for us to draw a circle. We need to do measurements. We need to be accurate uh, with our calculations, right? And the way we, be, uh, we, we become accurate with our calculations is we lay down a grid on top of any shapes, any, any geometric shapes that we work with. And that's how coordinate geometry really came about, right? You know, we would we would study shapes. For example, if you know, if you're if you're driving a car, you know, or your car usually has four wheels, right? For the wheel to drive straight, you need to have all those tires exactly the same shape, or wagon wheels, or whatever it might be. And the only way for us to really create things that are identical is to put them on a grid system, is to put them on a coordinate system and do exact measurements. So what we're going to do is uh, draw a grid and throw our circle on there and see how right angle triangles are related to circles, which are basically our ideal cyclic functions. Let's see, what color should we use? Let's see how these things come out. Let's see if we can use a light green for this. Let's see how the light green turns out. And we'll use a blue. Let's use a blue. Yeah, that's nice and dark. So the most important thing about a, about a circle is its center, right? If we have the center of a circle and if we have its radius, that's basically a circle, right? We can recreate that circle anywhere we want, right? So what we're gonna do is put a dot almost in the middle of this. Let's try to make it as center as possible. So what have we got? We got one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So we want 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we're gonna throw our center of the circle right here and let's make it center according to the camera so we're going to throw it right here okay that's the center of our circle and what we're going to do is we're going to go out let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine let's go out nine squares on the axes and then we'll sort of rough sketch draw in our circle Right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Now the trick is going to be uh, to be able to draw uh, a perfect circle as close as we can get and uh, there's a, there is a joke with the math community that the only people that actually know how to draw a perfect circle are people who are insane uh, freehand anyway and um, I've been able to pull it off you know just a handful of times so I guess those were the moments that I was technically insane or mathematically insane um, I'm not sure if that's the case right now but this is the way we're gonna do it. So, let's see.
So that's not the best circle, but it's something we can work with, right? sort of a warp circle. Should we try it again? Let's try it again. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, the problem with this is if you go diagonally, it's not nine squares, right? So we're going to have to try to do this freehand. And That is pathetic. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring a string. So what I'm going to do to try to draw this as accurately as possible, uh, I want to grab the, some floss and we're just going to use floss as our string to draw and accurate so far. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, there's our circle or end points and what we're going to do is tie this up right. so I'm just putting a knot on it I'm gonna tie the sucker up that way we got our accurate points and what we're going to do is just hold this at the center and just go around right Hopefully that's accurate enough. Let's do it like this. That's not bad. 
so we're just gonna go over it and make it thicker We'll keep our uh, our flaws for circles that we're going to create later, right? So this is our circle. This is the center, our origin, and we have a radius of five squares or nine squares here, right? So what we're going to do as well is let's throw a grid on here and. Let's actually put a grid of um, black marker. Okay, let's see if we can this black marker as well. No, no good. Actually, so let's put a grid of uh, light green um, coordinate system of light green on here. And what we're gonna do is put an x axis. Hopefully that comes out okay. Let's see if we can be accurate. We'll use a, a level. Okay. Okay, that's our Y axis, and this is going to be our X axis. So we got a coordinate system on here right now. That's our Y axis and that's gonna be our X axis. And a circle represents a perfect cyclic function. And what a cyclic function is, is something that repeats itself uh, over a certain period of time or over a certain distance. So something that constantly repeats, right? It does a full, full period, boop, and it comes in again and does it again and does it again and does it again, right? You can think of a clock, uh, 12 hours right goes into 12 hours and it kicks into p.m. I guess and it goes around again and it keeps on going around and around and around right may it be the tides of the ocean based based on the moon cycle right may it be the earth rotating around this axis may it be sound waves right coming at you because sound and light and vibrations these are all cyclic functions they're basically waves right light travels as a wave sound definitely travels as a wave right the only reason you can hear me right now is because speakers are vibrating at a certain frequency and you're hearing me right and those are waves coming at you and waves are cyclic functions and if i'm able to manipulate uh the period the amplitude and i can lay one wave on top of another those are the different types of sounds I can create, right? And the most basic, most rudimentary cyclic function is a circle. And what we do with circles, what we, what we have to do with the circle is we have to understand how to move around it, right? We have to do an analysis of how do we move around this? We need to find exact points on a circle, right? So we'll call this our x-axis. Okay. And we'll call this our y-axis, right? And this is just naming system that everybody goes with. It's something standardized that we all agreed upon, right? We agreed that the horizontal would be the x-axis and the vertical would be the y-axis. So let's do the let's do the rest of our our drawings with uh, a red and a blue color. Now, just imagine if we, we were on the circle, and what you have to keep in mind is, and this is something that a lot of people uh, seem, make a mistake with, right? The grid 
is not our circle. The grid is a reference point, right? So when we say we want you to move around a circle or find yourself on a function, you can't go off the relation, right? You can't go off a function if you have a function. So what we do is let's assume we're standing right here, right? We're at the edge, right at the corner here of the circle. And hopefully that little guy comes out, right? It's supposed to be a little man standing here. So let's assume this is us, right? And we want to move around the circle. Now there are two ways, two main ways that we can find ourselves around the circle at any given location, right? Accurately. What I could tell you is, I could tell you that I want you to move along the circle a certain distance at a certain angle from the center, right? That's one way I can tell you to go anywhere on the circle that I want you to go, right? So let's assume, you know, I wanted you to travel up to here, right? Up to this point. So now I want you to stand here. So you're going to go along until you get to this location. Now, how am I going to get, get you to go to that location? The way I'm going to tell you to do this is, is to move around along the circle at a certain distance, at a certain angle, right? So let's throw a line here from the center to where you are right now. So what we have right now is you've traveled nine units, whatever the units might be. Each one of these squares is, you know, I haven't measured it. I don't know what each one of these squares is on the grid paper. It could be one kilometer. It could be one meter. It could be one mile. It could be a yard, whatever it is, right? So right now we know from the center of the circle to this point, this is called the radius and this is equal to nine, right? because we set up our circle with a radius of nine. And based on our grid, our coordinate system, we're gonna call this location zero, zero, right? Just as a reference point, the, it's the easiest way to do this, right? We're gonna call the center of the circle zero, zero. So that's one way of telling you to go here, but that becomes a little difficult because measuring the arc length of the circle is difficult it's not an easy task it's not just a straight line you would have to give you know the the thing a curve Ooh, where are we a curve from here going all the way around so if you were able to do that i would tell you to go a certain angle theta here right and theta is just i believe it's greek alphabet that we use to represent the angles you could call that anything you want it doesn't have to be theta but theta is a standard symbol that we use to represent angles right now that's one way for you to get to here another way that i can get you to go to this location is by giving you since we have an xy coordinate system set up here is by giving you a coordinate system right so i could say come to this location based on a certain x value and a certain y value right and we talked about how you move around the coordinate system in series one when we talked about you know just basic uh, cartesian coordinate system and if you don't know how to move around the cartesian coordinate system um, it's a non-asmr math video but you might want to take a look at that right basically the way it works is this is our x-axis and x moves along like this so we're going to go a certain x value here right and that's going to take us to this location that's the x coordinate and a certain y value here right that's our y value there and that's our x value there now the way it works is this just becomes a right angle triangle right so let's bring our ruler back or our level back and just draw a right angle triangle Put a little 
thing here. This thing. I gotta remember to draw the lines on this side, not go through, boop. And that's what little ding we have right there, right? So, what we got right now So what we got right now, the length, the distance from this point to this point is just our Y, right? This is how far we've traveled up to get to this location. So we can just call this the Y distance, right? And the distance we've traveled from here to here is just our X coordinate, right? It's just the X distance. Right? And this gives us our right angle triangle and this is how triangles are related to circles because what's going to happen right now is if you start moving around a circle if you start moving around the circle anywhere on the circle all that's going to happen is we're going to create a right angle triangle right that's the way we find ourselves around the circle and that's the simplest the quickest way for us to find out where we end up around the circle right so if you continue to move around the circle right let's put another guy here let's assume there's gravity here so we're actually upside down here right And as soon as you come around here, you've gone one cycle, one period, right? And that's what we say when it comes to, uh, you know, naming these things. If you go one complete cycle, that's one period. Uh, for a clock, you start the cycle here and 12 gets you to the beginning, right? With the Cartesian coordinate system, with a circle, with a unit circle, it's been standardized with us starting here and on the positive x-axis and going counterclockwise, okay? Now, so this is our circle and how it relates to a triangle, a right angle triangle. And what we'll do, we'll draw another triangle here and. And just so you see that nothing changes with this, right? So if we do this, And what we have here is another right angle triangle with a distance of y and since this direction is negative for the x value the distance this way is going to be negative right well i'm just going to call it x or you can think about it as negative x if you want um, and if, when we draw this other triangle there's two different angles we can reference right we can reference it from the positive x-axis going this way and we're going to call this theta one i guess if that's theta this is theta one taking us to the new location or we can reference it based on this theta theta i'm going to call this r and the reason i'm going to call this r is not arbitrary is because the angle which is closest to the x-axis we refer to as the reference angle right so if we measure angles from the positive x-axis going counterclockwise, we call those angles angles in standard position, right? So we're gonna write this thing over here, right? So theta s, let's just put a little s down here, right? And we'll call this s1. And subscripts in mathematics are basically like last names, right? They, they give us more accurate understanding of what it is that we're talking about right whatever your name is i'm pretty sure there are a lot of other people 
with your name your name plus your last name that narrows it down to fewer people right that's what subscripts are in mathematics when we write a symbol and then put a little thing at the bottom and another little thing at the bottom all that is 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 just us being more accurate with our terminology so we know exactly what it is that we're talking about okay so when you're moving around the circle any angle that you measure from the positive x-axis going counterclockwise to a length and these are called uh, terminal arms right so this is called a terminal arm wherever you end up being right so if you're standing here the the line from the origin to where you are is called the terminal arm of the circle right wherever you're going so that's called terminal arm So you can think of the terminal arm as where you are on the circle, okay? The angle coming off the positive x-axis going counterclockwise is called the reference angle. Uh, it's called the uh, angle in standard position, right? So theta s, we're going to refer to angle in standard position okay now one of the other ways that we can figure out where we are what the angle is to the terminal arm is measure the angles from the measure the angle closest to the x-axis right so what we do here is the angle in this quadrant, and this is four different quadrants that we have for the circle, right? This is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four, right? If we broke it up. So in here, the angle in standard position becomes the reference angle. In here, the angle in standard position is different than the reference angle, right? So the reference angle is just the angle closest to the x-axis, right? So theta r is reference angle. Angle and closest closest to the x-axis, right? Closest to x-axis. Angle in standard position is from positive x-axis counterclockwise, right? The axis counterclock. Okay. So that's three words that we have to learn, right? In trigonometry, they're super important. There's one other word that you have to learn related to circles that's super important is coterminal angle. And coterminal angle is basically what other angle gets you to the terminal arm, to the terminal side, right? So when you're moving around the circle, from here all the way around, is 360 degrees right so angle in standard position comes off the positive x-axis and goes this way 360 degrees you're back to where you were right now if I say move in the opposite direction start here and go clockwise that's considered to be negative right so I could tell you to come to this terminal arm, to come to this side, okay, by telling you not to go this way, but to go this way. And that becomes a negative theta, right? 
it's like the x-axis right this way is positive and this way is negative right angles is the same thing this way is positive and this way is negative so for us there is multiple ways there's actually an infinite number of angles which are which will give get us to a certain terminal side right terminal arm if we had another triangle here i could tell you to go from here this way positive direction with an angle and it gets you to this arm or i could tell you to go this way negative direction it gets you to this arm i could tell you to come here and then go another 360 you end up at the same place and then go another 360 you end up at the same place right and this goes an infinite number of times right because it's a cyclic function it continuously repeats right if you think of a wheel going around and around and around it passes the same point multiple times right on your car you have rpm reps per minute right or whatever whatever the terminology is that's basically telling you that you're going around a certain number of times per second or per minute or whatever it is so there's another term that we have to learn when it comes to circles is uh, the angle but coterminal angle and coterminal means any other angle that gets you to the same location okay and what we're going to do we're going to call that theta c So these are so these are the four words that you really have to learn because what we're gonna do is start talking about uh, the circle but we're gonna talk about the unit circle and the unit circle basically standardizes things for us instead of giving us um, a radius of nine what we're gonna do we're gonna standardize that and just call the radius of one okay because well one is easy to scale right so it's really just us making calculations easy for us and simple for us to do and that's what we're going to talk about so what we're going to do right now now that we've talked about the terminology and this is again words that you have to know right and if you want an example let's do let's do an example of this right let's figure out what a certain angle is going to be and find out what you know the angle in standard position the, the a reference angle and a coterminal angle are for wherever we're going to end up right so let's say we're going to go to this location here where this guy is right now so we're going to draw our triangle or we won't draw our triangle what we're going to do is we're going to draw our terminal terminal arm right which basically means we ended up there right So what we got is we've traveled to this right to this location here we've moved around the circle from here and ended up here now i don't have a protractor i don't know what that angle is but i'm going to estimate it now the way you estimate the way you can do an estimation and we'll talk a lot more about this so this is sort of like the introduction of us learning terminology right that's what we're mainly concerned about we'll get into exact uh, calculations in uh, future little segments so from here let's assume we traveled to here okay now if you go halfway around the circle as we talked about if you do a 180 you've turned around and gone in the opposite direction right so if we're going in this direction now we're going in this direction right we're in opposite ends that's 180 degrees a full circle is 360 degrees and since this is divided into four quadrants up to here that's 90 degrees obviously right these two lines the coordinates are somewhat perpendicular so if you go from here to here you've traveled 90 degrees if you go from here to here you've traveled 180 degrees if you go from here all the way to here that's 
three nineties, right? That's 270 degrees. And if you go four nineties, that's 360 degrees. So this angle here, approximately, let's assume it's going to be 225 degrees. Okay. So we're going to call this theta in standard position as 225 degrees. Okay. Now the reference angle for this terminal arm is going to be the closest angle to the X axis, right? And we don't care which X axis, which part of the X axis it is. It sort of acts like a magnet. It gets to the X axis as quickly as possible. So the, the reference angle for this terminal arm is this guy right here, right? Because if you're here, you get stuck then towards the X axis, right? So this is called the reference angle. And the way we figure that out is we go from here to here was 180, from here to here was 225. So all we gotta do is subtract the 180 and that gives us that, right? If we take this part away, 180 minus 225 gives us the reference angle here. And the reference angle here, R, theta R, is going to be 45 degrees, okay? That's the, clo that's the closest angle to the x-axis. We don't care if it's the positive x-axis or the negative x-axis. As far as coterminal angle goes, we can go this way, right? And this would be negative. So one coterminal angle, theta C, would be 360 minus 225. Let's just do the calculation here, right? 360 degrees minus 225, right? Five, you can't take from zero, so that's five and 10. So that becomes five, this becomes three, and that becomes one. So a hundred and negative, a hundred and thirty-five degrees ends at the same terminal arm, right? Ends here as well, so it gets you to the same location. So if you were standing here, if I told you to go negative 135 degrees, you would go this way, right? If I told you to go 100 positive, to go positive 135 degrees, you would probably end up somewhere here. So that would be the wrong direction. That would be the wrong arm we're trying to get to, right? So that's one coterminal angle. I could give you more. I could say, okay, we've got 225 here. Let's add another 360 to this and go all the way around. Because if you want to go around the circle, to where you began is 360 degrees. So we can go 225 plus 360. Let's do another calculation. 360 plus 225. So that's going to be five, eight, and five. So 585 degrees gets you to this terminal arm, to this location. So we would have gone around here and then gone around again. And that becomes 585 degrees and we can continuously do that we could take negative 135 and subtract 360 and that again will end up at the same location right so that's sort of an infinite loop um, that we're talking about there and, and that comes into play uh, in different places where uh, we'll talk a lot more about that when, about this when we start talking about uh, trick function functions when we start graphing trick functions so that's sort of the way right angle trigonometry is really related to circles which are cyclic functions and that's how we find ourselves around a circle and these are the terminologies these are the terms that you really have to learn and you have to become extremely familiar with them because we're going to continuously reference them so what we're going to do is uh, take these guys down and uh, uh, create another circle but this time we're not going to label the radius as nine units nine of these squares i'm going to standardize this and i'm going to call this the radius one 
because we can easily work with one and we can scale it and we're going to refer to that thing as the unit circle and that is where we're going to build our understanding of trigonometry okay uh, learn this terminology think about this for a little bit as moving around the circle and um, I'll see you guys in the next video bye for now